Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chair Mallory, for being here. I'm hearing a total disconnect between what the senator from Rhode Island just said and what the administration is doing. So I'm going to ask you the question now, but then I want a few minutes to vent before you answer it. So here's the question. Um, in May of last year, the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council released a report that said carbon capture is among the types of projects that will not benefit a community, not benefit a community. And yet the senator from Rhode Island, member of your own party and a tremendous advocate for environmental justice, uh, believes just the opposite. There's a disconnect in your own party among people who are real advocates uh, for environmental justice. So here's what I'm gonna say in way of venting, but that's my question. Um, you know, at everything that you do at CEQ relates to the West, everything you do. And it makes a difference for us on whether we have enough electricity in our homes via transmission lines. It impacts our ability to fight wildfires, to commute to work on road and bridges uh, in massively uh, large states. So it's a huge consequence. It's, it's because of NEPA that I wanted to serve on this committee. Um, it, it is that important to our state. It affects us that much. So I'm really disheartened by this administration's actions in rolling back what were common sense reforms made by the last administration. So let me paint a picture as I see it. Americans are facing the highest inflation in 40 years, the cost uh, of the average household of this inflation is 5,200 annually. There's this sense of frustration and doom, and some say magical thinking about inflation as it relates to the way this administration looks at it, and that was reported in Bloomberg yesterday. Gas prices hit a brand new record high. The average American's paying 2,000 more per year just for gasoline, and it's higher in my big state of Wyoming, Americans are looking at the stock market and their 401ks with horror. On top of that, our nation is facing a supply chain crisis. There's a nationwide shortage of baby formula. Brownouts are being discussed as possibilities in our uh, energy sector. And CEQ, through its permitting regulations, are a key player in addressing these challenges. And CEQ's answer has been more government more red tape, more bureaucracy. So that's the kind of magical thinking in response to all of these problems our nation's having right now that I just think has got to stop. Now listen to this. Terry O'Sullivan, the president of the Laborers International Union of North America, said it best concerning CEQ's latest actions. This is a huge labor union talking about CEQ's latest actions. The rollback of updates to the National Environmental Policy Act reinstate burdensome requirements that will cause excessive permit delays and allow project adversaries to use frivolous lawsuits to disrupt or upend long overdue construction. Once again, communities in need of vital infrastructure and the hardworking men and women who build America will be waiting as project details are subjected to onerous reviews. Americans will continue to bear the expense of NEPA-related delays, which cost taxpayers millions of dollars annually. Lengthy review processes and unpredictable legal, legal challenges are also having a chilling impact on private investment in infrastructure. So this Congress puts out a big infrastructure bill. People on this committee worked hard on it, including the chair and the ranking member, to get infrastructure moving in this country. And what does CEQ do? It slows it down. It throws up roadblocks. It puts up delays. It makes this country move slower and more expensively. It takes projects longer. They're more expensive. And our ability to respond 
to the demand for infrastructure is being roadblocked by CEQ, by the White House. This is you give with one hand and you take away with the other. And the American people know it. Uh, so the frustration level is high with me. It's high with the labor unions. And I want to tell you, then when you move to this report on uh, carbon capture, again, this report says carbon capture is among the types of projects that will not benefit a community. So what I'm just saying is the frustration is what we're trying to do as a Congress is just being thwarted at every turn by what you all are doing in the White House. This is the expression of frustration that you're hearing at this table today. Uh, I haven't given you enough time because I needed to unload on you. Uh, but um, uh, while I, while I um, turn over the um, questioning to uh, the next member of the committee, uh, I may submit some questions for the record because I am 100% confused about what this administration's uh, goals are. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, and I, I'm sorry. I'll be very quick because I know the time is over, but I did want to say a couple of really quick things. First of all, on the, uh, on the idea about what NEPA is, what we're doing for the NEPA program, those changes that we made are fundamental to ensuring that, in fact, we actually assess the impacts. Like, if we are not able to look at the impacts, then we're moving forward on very expensive projects, spending a lot of money, as you all authorized, and we're doing it without the right information. So that's number one. That is critical to what we're doing. Those were not common sense uh, changes that, that occurred. Secondly, I think it's important to separate out the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council recommendations from the president. I mean, the president is setting forth what he believes to be important key elements for our strategy, which includes uh, the investments in technology on carbon capture, which includes thinking about removal as a technique. The communities don't like it because they have decades of experience, even some would say centuries of experience, of people not doing projects in a way that is beneficial to them or that even takes into consideration their, um, their potential harms. And I think that's the thing that we have to address.